I very rarely look at my range meter. That's the distance I can go on the charge that's available to me at, at any time other than when I just get in the car. Quick glance, got enough miles, I'm off. That, fine. You can just ignore it. You can drive. Now, when it comes to charging, I personally hate standing around waiting for my car to charge. So, at home, as I said, this is no problem. I plug it in before I go to bed. Car's ready in the morning. I don't care how long it takes. Always full in the morning. But out on the road, I am very much more in the Formula One frame of mind. That's little and often. So, let me explain why. As I've said, I personally hate waiting while the car charges. So I only ever charge while I'm already doing something else. Like the Formula One with the changing tyres, you may as well put some fuel in. Now, at my age, I can't do a four, five or six hour drive without stopping for me, not the car. I need the toilet. I occasionally need a coffee or some food. I need to have a good stretch and maybe wander around, get a breath of fresh air. So on a long journey, if I'm going to stop several times, to go to the toilet, grab a sandwich or whatever it might be. That, that might take 5, 10, possibly 15 minutes. I will happily plug it in, then go and use the toilet, finish, wash my hands, go and get a coffee, donuts, whatever it is, eat it either in the services or back at the car. And as soon as I've finished, that's it. I unplug the car and I set off. I don't care how much electricity has gone in because from experience, I know that in 10 or 15 minutes, I could add somewhere between 50 and 100 miles range to the car. So if I am stopping more frequently, about two hours is my uh, maximum at the moment. I just charge a little at each time I stop. Yeah, all you youngsters out there, you'll get there one day. You'll be stopping every couple of hours. I hope you do get to find out what it's like. So my philosophy is really simple on the long journey. I might have to make two stops for me, say a toilet break, bit of coffee or a lunch break and I will typically take 10-15 minutes for a short break half an hour for lunch so for both of those I'll just plug in and in half an hour I can add well over 120 miles so in the two hours driving between stops I cover about 100 120 miles yeah they say you do 70 you don't there's always traffic roadworks or something uh, average speed on a motorway is round about 60 so after two hours driving, I've probably used about 120 mile range. My 15 minute stop can replace most of that. And my 30 minute lunch break can replace it all. I don't ever wait for it to get up to 100%. It doesn't matter to me if I've only added 60 miles. I'll set off when I am ready. So range to me never becomes an issue. I know I'll be stopping every two hours. So as long as my range is more than 120 mile, I'm perfectly happy. Range to me is nowhere near as important as speed of charging, but more important than that is how you charge. See, I see so many people out on the chargers, they seem to get the idea that every time you plug in, you have to charge it absolutely full to 100%, and they sit around waiting, sometimes for up to an hour, I've got countless videos of chargers that put the screen on the front with the screen showing people's cars at, say, 93% state of charge and they're charging at a rate of 4 kilowatts. That means that it's going to take probably half an hour to do the last 4 kilowatts. And 4 kilowatts is about 15 miles. Yet they sit there cursing and swearing, asking, why do these take so long to charge? Here's the answer. Don't charge to 100%. Put in as much as you need in the time you have available and you will have a much better experience of living with an EV. One final point here, and this is important, well, it depends where I'm heading to. Um, now, if I'm on a long trip and I don't have enough battery to allow me to reach, say, home or my hotel, at home I've got cheap overnight charging and many hotels have free EV charging. So I know I have to stop at a public charger on the way. I can't get there in one go and charge the car. Now I could stop on the way, plug it in and then sit for an hour, filling it right up to the top, all the way to 100%. But that's stupid because there are two issues with that. First is it's going to take ages, possibly an hour or more in some cars. I don't want to be sitting on a motorway service station for an hour when I'm in a hurry to get home or to a hotel. And the second one is just money. 
When I buy electricity in a public EV charger, it costs me approximately 10 times as much as the electricity I can buy from my utility company when I plug my car in at home, and infinitely dearer than free charging at my hotel. So, filling the battery to 100% at a public EV charger on that route is ridiculous if I've only got if I need to add about 20 or 50 miles. Absolute total waste of time and money. I would be much better off just stopping for five minutes, just put enough electricity into the battery to be able to get me there with an almost empty battery. Then I can plug in while I'm asleep and I can either charge up at a uh, tenth of the cost or totally free of charge. Now, to some people, this sounds crazy complicated. Once again, don't forget, once you've got your EV, you'll know your battery size, you know what you've got, you'll know the maximum charging speed, you'll know how long it takes you to charge the battery, and if you've got any sense, sometime or other you will have charged it from almost empty up to 100% to find out for yourself. But then these things become second nature to us. Those people who love their petrol cars, they always seem to laugh at us for these complicated calculations. It's just worth reminding them that they do exactly the same calculations as we do. It's just that for them, they've been doing them for so many years, so many times, they've become second nature, they don't realise they're doing it. Let me give you an example. When I was in a petrol car heading home after a long trip, I always used to look at a petrol gauge and in my mind I'd work out, do I have enough petrol to get me home? <laughs> we all do it. Now sometimes the answer might be, well, possibly, other times, absolutely, definitely not. Now, if the answer's definitely not, that means I have to stop at some point on the journey to put in some petrol. So if I've got a long motorway stretch ahead of me where petrol is 20, 30, 40 pence a litre dearer than at my local supermarket, am I going to stop at a motorway services and fill my petrol tank to the top with really expensive petrol? Of course not. That's just a total waste of money. So what I would do is calculate in my mind how many gallons do I need to add now to get me home and that's the maximum I'll put in. Then in the morning or when I get back that night I'll go down to the local supermarket and fill it right away up at the cheaper price. So when you drive petrol cars you go through exactly the same calculations it's just you've done so many times become almost unconscious. Quick glance at the petrol gauge everything okay yeah let's go. It really is simple. Believe me, in time, you'll become like that with your EV. I'm like that now. I get in, I just a brief glance at the range, make sure I've got enough range for where I'm going. That's it, I'm off. The end of it, no range anxiety. Now, you do have one real advantage. Instead of looking at a petrol gauge in an EV, you'll have a display which actually shows you, if you set it to this, how, many, how much electricity you've got as a percentage of the battery or how many miles you can do. I always, when I'm driving, prefer miles. So within a few weeks of owning your EV, you'll know whether this figure is accurate. For example, if you're driving, if you jump in your car and it says you've got 100 miles and you're going 90 miles, it means you should arrive at the destination with 10 miles of battery left. Now, if on the way down there, it's crashing towards zero and you get all sorts of warnings, go and charge your car now, you won't make it, you know you can't rely on it. If instead you arrive and you've got more than 10, maybe 20 or 25 mile left, you know that you can trust it to be on the safe side of accurate. But that's all coming with experience. Few long trips, few times where the battery charge gets rather low, it will soon answer all of those questions for you. It's not something long term that you need to consider. Well, anyhow, thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave. I do hope you have enjoyed this video and it's helped you in some way. If you have liked it please click the like button and if you'd like to see more like this please subscribe if you click the notification bell we'll notify you whenever we launch a new video massive thank you to our patreon members details for that are down below without your support we would not be able to do an awful lot of what we do so thanks again i'm dave <laughs>